Hi everyone, I'm Kelly and in today's video we're going to be painting this cute little pair of harvest mice. The reference photo will be posted in the description box below along with all of the supplies that I'll be using. So I'm going to set this off to the side and just a quick word about uh, the supplies we'll be using. I've gone ahead and I've pre-drawn my mice on a small sheet of watercolor paper and I've marked off uh, the edges so that way if I decide to put a background I know how far to go and it will still fit in a mat and look nice. So let's start our little mouse. Um, I'm going to start with my quill brush. I'm going to wet that and I'm going to take some yellow ochre paint and I'm going to add to that some of my burnt umber get a nice color it's a light color um, which will kind of be our first layer for the mice and i'm going to just quickly lay in the color and i'm not worried too much right now about uh, details any fuzzy bits or anything like that we'll we'll deal with that after our first layer dries. I'm just going to put this down kind of quickly. And I've made a small change from the reference. I've given this little guy his tail going downward because in the photo his tail kind of sticks up and it looks a little a little odd. So with this same color let's let's add some color to our poppy. And what I'm going to do is rinse off my brush dab it off on my towel and kind of soften the edge so that I have kind of a darker edge and a lighter edge. And again, don't worry, we'll be going back and putting in more details so that these will look dimensional. Okay, we have our first layer of color. I'm going to take some of my brown I'm going to add some of that to my little mice right now. Now I have to be careful when I do this because I'm putting wet paint on color that is potentially drying. So I've dried off my brush quite a bit and I'm using my barely damp brush to kind of move the color around. Now they're, the area around their noses is, it's not really pink or pinkish. It, it's a little bit orangey, so I'm just going to use some of my burnt sienna color, which is kind of a little orangey color, but it's light enough that uh, it, will, it will give you the idea that it almost looks like it's pink. I'm going to switch to my slightly smaller brush. Let's take some of this brown. Let's start adding a little bit of color at the bottom because the, the pods have kind of a uh, kind of a lobed look. So I'm adding a little bit of this and I'm adding a little bit of color and I'm gonna soften this. Just adding color where it should be darker and softening it, kind of moving color around, darkening areas that should be a little bit darker and I'm kind of doing these edges as if they were um, almost lobed like a, a pumpkin. You know, I'm kind of making curved segments and then softening color. And we're just going to continue adding details. Now I do need some darker color. So I'm going to take some of this brown that's off to the side and I'm going to add a little bit of indigo blue to it. Add it a little too much, it's a little too dark. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm darkening my brown so I get a slightly darker, grayer look. I can add that in a couple of spots to, this is really going to add some dimension, some texture to my, to my painting. It'll really make the lighter areas um, much lighter. And that's a little trick. If you want something to look lighter, put something dark next to it. And if things get too dark, you can always 
just lighten them up a little bit. And I'm exaggerating some of the areas because sometimes you just have to do that. And our, you, you don't always get the opportunity to follow everything exactly. So sometimes you have to push the colors uh, to be a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. And that's what makes it fun. And I'm just doing a lot of kind of back and forth shading and kind of removing color, looking around for things. Okay, now I'm gonna to switch to the even tinier brush. And I'm gonna pick up more of my blue and I'm going to keep mixing the blue in the brown until I get a black or a very dark gray. And I, I, like, uh, I like doing this. I do have black on my palette, but I wanna to stick to a limited color palette so everything looks very cohesive. So let's paint his eye. First we'll do one of them. And we'll do the other, and I'm trying to refer to my reference photo, so I put the kind of highlight in the right spot so they look so they look cute. And check to make sure one does have a smaller eye than the other. Now let's let's darken him up a little bit. He needs some he needs to be a little bit darker. And my brush is fairly dry at this stage. It's got more uh, pigment than, than water at this point. And let's, let's add some dark to this guy over here. And his ear is, uh, I still have this white bit here with his ear, but I'm actually, I'm okay with that. Be careful going around the eyes that you don't uh, you don't loosen the pigment around the um, the black that you've put down and do our little tail. The pods themselves have uh, quite a few dots on them, so and they're pretty dark. So I'm going to take some brown and then I'm going to pick up some of this black that I made because remember it's brown and blue together just to darken it up a little bit. And then I'm going to lay my cloth over my little animals here so that way I can, I can splatter on that. And then I can just dab away any splatters that went crazy. Here, the, there's not as many dots, so I can actually paint them in by hand. Okay, I'm gonna add some yellow ochre now to this, kind of lighten it up a little bit. I'm gonna create more layers of color and texture. I think what I will do is I'll add kind of a, not a full background, but a partial background. So first what I'm going to do is mix up some color. And I'll take my sap green and I'll add some brown to it to kind of get that dark green look. And I'm gonna add some water to it to make kind of a nice nice puddle. I'm gonna switch to my bigger brush. And if you had an even bigger brush, I would say use that because it'll just make things far easier for you. And now I'm going to very carefully paint around our little friends here. And I think I'm gonna have a diagonal background. So what I'm going to do is keep this the way it is, drop in some color, and then think about where a diagonal would be, and then kind of go from there. And you want to do this background fairly quickly and get really close. Now before everything dries on me, I'm going to 
soften these edges because I don't want I don't want hard edges I want things to look nice and soft and then I can just drop more color in and I'm going to extend to the color behind just a little bit and down here I'm just kind of dry brushing the color so that it doesn't look so uh, so striped this looks a little bit better I have a fine liner pen it's in a sepia so let's uh, let's just do a little detail I'm being very loose and very very kind of sketchy with it what I want is just to kind of enhance the parts that I already have can add some, some more dots. I like adding pen work. Uh, I think it uh, I think it can make a, a painting look kind of fun and uh, it loosens up a painting. So if you're kind of a stiff painter where everything has to be precise, this gives you the opportunity to have some fun. Let's add a few little marks here and there on our on our little on our little mice. Let's grab our medium sized brush and let's grab some of the burnt sienna. Dab off the excess water on your paper and let's add some color to our, our little mouse. Shape them up a little bit. And then let's go straight into the brown. Let's add some details with our little brush. And just be careful of this step. You don't get too carried away. I may soften up some of these lines so that they're not so they're not so streaky. Let's add a few last touches to our pods. And that seems dry enough. So I can take a fine liner or a, a, in this case it's a gel pen and I can just add some little white details. One final thing, our, don't forget this is a mouse so he has to have whiskers. So you can continue to add as many details as you want. This just gives you an idea of how to um, paint a cute little pair of uh, harvest mice. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button and don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified when I publish a new video. Um, all of the um, materials and the reference photo, link to the reference photo will be in the description box below. If you do try this, and I hope you do, please share your work on Instagram and tag it Tutorials with Kelly so that I can see it and like it. And I will see you in our next video. Bye!